Today we are going to be working on this table here. Uh, we're going to be using the Cubano stamp and the Lemon Drop Transfer and we are going to stamp the whole thing with the Cubano stamp. We're going to use like a royal blue and then we're going to come back with the um, Lemon Drops kind of in the corner kind of framing the um, transfer. Let us know where you're watching from and um, if you use this Cubano stamp, which happens to be my favorite. Well, and this is the first stamp we ever bought. Yes. We went to a fellow stockist um, just right down the road from us and asked her all about OD. Oh, this is the first stamp we bought. And we stamped everything. I stamped all kinds of things in my house. Cutting board, book, I stamped all kinds of stuff. The floor. Yes. Okay, so... Um, Here's what We're going to use Cubano, which is uh, a 12 by 12. It kind of looks like a hand-painted tile stamp. We've used it on tile, but today we're going to use it on the table. And then our other product that we're going to be using today, um, you can see it all on camera? Right yes, it looks good. The other product that we're going to be using today is the Lemon Drop. Lemon Drop comes in a tablet form now. Um, it's got four 12 by 16 pages, and it's got... Lots of lovely lemons. So when life gives you lemons... You make a lemonade table. Yes. So four pages of these beautiful, they look hand-painted, they're gorgeous lemons. And um, that's our other product that we're using. We're going to be using uh, a brayer. So this is the Iron Orchid Designs brayer. It's kind of like a rubber paint roller. And it's perfect for distributing the paint thinly on these stamps. We're going to be using paint on these stamps, not ink. So um, just to clarify, we use ink on a lot of projects, mm -hmm. especially if it's a, a stamp with a lot of detail, fine detail. We'll use the ink and a stamp pad and we'll stamp the ink. On something like this, it's bigger. The design, the is perfect. yeah, the design is not as detailed. We prefer to use chalk paint and we'll brayer it on. And if you want to move over here, we will just get started. Okay, I'm gonna swing y'all over you just a little to turn bit. The That's right, I got it. Okay. Sorry. This is our first, like, it's not our first live, but it's our first um, primetime IOD TV live. So we're excited, yes. So if we screw it up, drop the camera, you know, we, all that stuff. You know, I've enjoyed watching everybody else's lives. Yeah. And so this is our turn. I love it. We're having a good time. So what we're using is chalk paint. Um, and we're just going to squeeze them out. I have a clear plastic um, sheet here. And this is the clear plastic sheet that came with my Cubano stamp, it comes on this side. We just peeled it off and this is what we're using for our paint. So don't toss those in the trash. Yeah, they're super Save useful. Them. They're also useful for like the stamps where you can um, use them to line up letters and things. Yes. All right. Um, so to do the braying, we're going to roll our brayer on here, get some paint and kind of offload. But we're gonna cover the whole thing. Thank you, Suzanne, first. she sprinkled. Sprinkled. Yeah, so notice Chrissy is covering the brayer very well with the paint, but then she's going to offload any excess she has because you, you don't want your paint to be drippy. You just want your brayer to be well covered. And I'm going to offload it on a piece of paper. It actually rolls better on paper than it does on this uh, slick surface. So then we're going to go to our stamp here. They can see everything well? Yes. Now remember when you first receive your stamps and you get them out of the package, make sure you condition them. Um, we use sandpaper and rub it briskly one way and then the other way. What you're doing, that's a very smooth plastic surface or kind of rubberized surface on the top of the stamp. You want to rough it up a little. It gives it a little tooth and it does a better job of uh, transferring. So, I'm just gonna you roll get... this on the whole entire stamp. And notice she's, she's not getting any of the uh, chalk paint in the 
in the areas between the designs. I'm trying. Point to that where you don't want it to right. get it. So in here, there's actually some right there. I don't want to get it there because it may stamp. But you know what? If it does. If it does, it's supposed to look a little distressed. And it's not perfection. It's going to look like an old hand-painted tile. And you know this one's perfect. So That's right. Don't worry too much. Just get, make sure you get the whole thing covered. All right. We're going to come back so over here. Are you going to start in the middle? The light. Or you're going to start on the end, on the edge. I don't need that right now. Um, let's start in the middle. Funny story is that we've done this project before. Should I start on this side? Yes. Or closer I to I like here? it better over there. Okay. So we've done this project before. So and we, I started on the edge. Yes. And I'm just eyeballing it. We probably should have marked center, but we're not planners like that. Mm -mm. So I hold it. I'm hovering. Now I'm committing. This is where I'm going to put my stamp. So, and then I hold it with my one hand, and then I'm just going to press down, making sure that all of the um, raised portions I push down. Just lightly, just making sure that you have right. good contact. And so notice she's holding with one hand, and then she's applying the pressure with the other, and then she changes hands. That's just to keep that stamp from shifting, which would give I a don't messy. Want to push it too much and right, that would give a messy impression. We want it to be as neat and tidy as possible. All right. I hope I put enough paint on this thing. I did not. Not like... quite. All right. So that's not perfect. That's it's too light. Color. So I have loaded too much paint. Come back over here. Yes. I was trying to be too perfect, and I offloaded too much paint. Um, it really needed more than that. No, we actually did that on purpose because we wanted to show you what to do, what to do in case that happened up. to you. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm not going to be as um, picky with offloading the paint. It's going to need... Be a little bit more generous with the paint. And you guys can do this, too, is... Um, you know, do a, a, a little sample. You could We could have sampled on the sampled um, on a piece of paper, paper to see. Yeah. And that's normally what we do in our classes. We give them a piece of paper to try it on um, to make sure that they're getting enough paint on. So I'm going to be a little bit more liberal with my paint this time. But here's the trick. Here, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be way more careful with how I put it on there. So I'm going to look from up above through the stamp. She's got to match up her design. And I'm trying to match it up perfectly. This is one of the only stamps that you can do that with. Because it's got this cross in the middle. It's very easy to line I'm up. Bernadette up. says, why not use a stencil? You could use a stencil. Once you get used to stamps, they are so easy. Yes. A stencil is Believe it or not, you have to be a little bit more careful, and a stamp is so easy. You could do a floor, you could do your front porch, you could do your patio. It, so this it. one looks much better, much um, darker blue, yes. and that's what I wanted. I want a deep, rich blue. So we come back over here, we're going to load it back up.
So if you look at this stamp, hey, I've got paint all over it. Yeah. But it's got a cross going down Show the where you got that paint in the, in the places you're not supposed to. Oh, yeah. Right, it's it, fine. see right in there, and those little. I'm just not gonna push it there. Right, <laughs> right. She could wipe that off with baby wipes, but. So um, it's got this X here, across here, and I'm gonna line that up, and I'm gonna line it up with this line going this way and this line. So, this is the easiest stamp to line up, because boom, I got that one, and I got that one. So I know we're lined up. Very good. And then this line is going. Of course, now I'm seeing right here, I'm gonna have a little bit of stamp, but that's fine. That's right. I'm loving this. Okay, now let's do those edges and show. And you know, these. this is a good um, tutorial here for say you were doing your, your floor. bathroom floor. And you have an edge. And you have an so edge. you've got two ways to do that edge on your bathroom floor. Um, one way is you could um, put your paint on very um, carefully. Here. Um, maybe tape off your, your edges, your walls, whatever you're going to be. To protect them, against. yeah. Um, and just kind of fold your stamp back. Um, or, so kind of show them that whenever you lay it yeah. down, if you can, without shifting. Oh, I really don't need both sides of this paper. Right. I'm going to do both sides because I'm just going to flip it. Okay, good. So um, you're down to your edge. Like Chrissy said, you could just fold up one half of the stamp and don't have any paint on that one half. Yeah. And just print, so pretend, imprint. pretend like we're doing a bathroom floor or you know, kitchen backsplash. And you're you up against the wall. You can just bend it like this and say your wall is right here on the edge. You could just bend it, put it down, and see how we're just kind of working our way up to the edge there. If we're pretending that there's a wall there. Um, but you can see like with her left hand, you might... If you didn't wipe all the paint off, you might get paint on your wall, so. Yeah. It'd be right. It'd be right, that's right. <laughs> so, you could do it that way, or you could. Now she's just flipped this stamp over. Or you could just measure your stamp, like if you're doing a floor and you've got a wall here, and you know. Um, Say it was a big room, and you've and got a lot. And you've only got lot. one side, and you've got this whole side that needs only half a stamp. You can cut this. You can cut it in half. Of course, that would be really hard and would break my heart because I want to use it again. But um, you can cut them if you need to do that edge. You can also cut this four ways if maybe you have four by four tiles. Uh, and, and you, you just wanted whatever. to do the four by fours. Yeah. Yes, good idea. All right, so I've still, I've, I stamped this side. I've still got wet paint on that side. So I'm just going to flip it over to that side and do right here. I'm going to line up there, line up here. Make sure I line up the bottom. Hold it with one hand. Push no it shifting. And I'm just letting the edge of it hang off the table. That's going to give me my edge. Voila! Voila! Um, so our, our transfers come in a tablet. They um, lift off here. We've got a white backing. Let me get in close there so they can see that. Somebody said, do you have the lemons in stock? Yes, we do. But again, I'm going to say, find your local stockist first. Uh, they have a paper backing. This paper backing is slick, so we want to make sure that um, our lemons stay on there. Um, I will show you on a bit what I do, what a little trick I do to make sure. Um, but we're going to cut these. And I just, I mean, you don't have to cut them perfectly. Don't, definitely don't go right up next to the lemons. Just cut them out. And um, since we are using, um, our, our paint's drying pretty quickly. I actually just stamped this one, y'all. And it's, look, it already feels dry. Yes. In a perfect world, uh, if I weren't on live, I would let this dry for hours. Yes. Our directions to the customer would be let it dry overnight. Yes. But bam. Before you transfer on it, I'm doing it like this and we're taking a chance that this is going to be okay and I'm going to put my little lemon drop on there 
and I've taken the white backing off. I'm putting it on here with the grid lines, you can see there. So if you have one that you're really worried about it being just, just perfectly straight, those grid lines are great for lining it up. And I'm taking, it comes with this little plastic, um, we need a name for this stick, Appli rubbing stick, applicator, applicator stick. stick. Yes. And we just rub right over it. And then what I do is I like to peek and see, oh, it's coming, oh. it's doing great. And then I'll be like, oh, well, that's kind of not stuck. And so I'll go back there and show again how you can cheat. You can peek. Yeah, you can just and lift then pull it up back a little peek. bit more and show some that's not like attached. it's not stuck here. Do you see that white there that's still on the plastic backing? So I'm just gonna lay it back that down. That needs another rub right I'm there. Yes. IOD right there. shared the link to the um, online stores and the okay, retail stores. All right, so. Y'all saw how I did that. I'm just going to make sure it all gets stuck down. Let's see. Um, Christina top. said, my husband said we have lemons in the fridge. Woo! Don't need, don't need, I guess, don't need the uh, lemons on the table Not too. Funny. Well, you know what? Wait till he takes a nap. And then lemon everything. Lemon everything <laughs> when he wakes up. Say, so, oops. Now we have lemons outside the fridge. What, what is it they say? It's easier to ask forgiveness than to ask permission. Well, so, fine. yes. Okay, so once we get our lemon on here, we're just going to make sure that everything is stuck down. I do that with my hands first so that I can feel if something is yes. not stuck down. And then I'm going to come back with the same plastic that it was on, and I'm going to... That's called burnishing. So what she's doing is making sure it's in great contact with the table. It is um, stuck. She could also feel if there were any bubbles, right. you know, like a little air bubble. And that's important to do to make sure that it's stuck before um, sealing it. So this that's table, right. um, we are probably going to seal with wax just because it's our preference. Um, but this, this transfer needs to be stuck down if you're sealing with anything. So lacquer over yes. it, you don't want that lacquer to get under it, cause it to bubble and come up. You, it's your job, make sure that transfer is stuck down there well. You wanna feel like, you know, you can rub your hand over it casually yeah. and- I mean, this is permanent. It's yes. not a sticker, it's, it's not coming off. Right. So this table has a natural, that's the crack. This where is where it folds down. This part right here would fold down. So she's just going right over that cracked area. And then we're gonna have to go back. And we will actually- Start pulling up from this side. Uh, we will actually cut the transfer right there. We'll show you that. So this is what you would do on a dresser if you if this piece was a dresser, a chest of drawers, and you have that crack for the drawer. Yeah, you got a crack for your drawers. What do you do? Well, you just transfer right over it, and then you come back and carefully cut it. Yeah, personally, I just try to. Some people cut beforehand. I just slap that transfer on there and try to act like it's not there, and then uh -huh. um, afterwards, um, it all works out visually, and it all looks perfect. Um, and sometimes, whenever we're we're doing these projects we like to give the transfers a light sand afterwards especially if they're going on something that's um and shabby if you're going for the shabby look, look yeah i probably won't do these because these have already got so much um you know they already look old and and you notice that a, a little bit of the cubano stamp is showing through and that's okay i like that yeah it's good if i had done you know a lighter color it would not have mm -hmm. but There we go. Oh, I don't need to throw that. So I'm she's use it. She's feeling with her fingers. You would be able to feel like if there was a tiny part of that leaf that was not it did not adhere very well, mm -hmm. and you could press it down very carefully with your finger, and, you and then back. she's gonna burnish. Now I already know that it's not gonna roll up with me being this rough with it with the paper. Because I've already checked it with my hand. Right. Gently. No surprises. Now I'm just quickly Very rubbing true. over it. It is struck down there. And this crack, I'll just kind of run my it. run my fingernail in the crack. Kind of split the transfer and there. She's actually 
and I'm kind of rubbing it down, making sure that that's yes. stuck as well. So, so she's actually broken the transfer or split it right there at that crack. And that looks great. Um, our uh, plan for this uh, table to finish it is to add more lemon drops um, over here and kind of run down the corners there. Move it in the center. I'm not, I'm not going to put anything in the center. I'll probably run some over here on that side too. Um, and then seal with wax, maybe even um, distress the edges a little bit. Yeah. Make it look a little like a little old farmhouse table, but um, it's going to look amazing. There you this go. is a weekend project that you can definitely do.